Okay, everyone, let's continue on to section six, secure external connectivity with L3 outs. External L3 out with BGP and OSPF. Okay, everyone, so let's begin. Let's discuss external L3 outs. And when we work with external L3 outs, it's basically we're connecting a remote network onto our ACI fabric by creating an external router domain. So you can see right here, we got a router domain, which is in this case, the L3 out. So first of all, I want to ask you, don't be scared about this slide. Don't be scared about this topology. It might look like it's very complex, but I am going to break it in two separate sections. The first one, we're going to configure an external L3 out to appear with a BGP to site number one, right? So we got site number one. We are going to configure BGP between my two border leaves. And by the way, it's called border leaf because it connects to an external network. So we label them as border leaves, right? So what we're gonna do, we are going to peer leaf 101 and leaf 102 to site one local core. And the way we do that, we have two fiber links and Imagine this is just a local network in my headquarters. Like say, for example, I have my ACI fabric in the headquarters data center, and there's also a site network. So we are leveraging that we're connected locally by, you know, having two fiber strands and we configure a BPC. So we do basically this. Let me draw it very simple. So we got leaf 101 and then we got leaf 102 and we want to connect to site one, which is basically on the same building. So we basically have two fiber strands from leaf 101 and the other one going from leaf 102 to my site one core or, you know, main switch. And we do this by creating a VPC. And the reason why we want to do a VPC, we want to have redundancy, not only from the core side, but also from the leaf side. So if I lose one leaf, I should still be able to access my resources via the second leaf. Okay. So another item that we're going to be working with, it's we are using a designated VLAN ID to peer BGP, meaning that I'm going to have a leaf 101, let me draw it right here, leaf 101 and leaf 102 with an SVI on VLAN 199. And the IP of this one will be 172, 16, 10, three for leave 102 and then the same SVI and VLAN 199 for leave 101 on 172, 16, 10, two. Okay. My router IDs are right here for BGP. This is going to be router ID 10.10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And this router ID will be 10, 20, 20, 20. Okay, and this is all configured in ACI and in the external L3L domain. Okay, so we also see that we are connected on port two on both leaves. So port two is where the fiber goes to that site one CAT 3750 core switch, right? So this core is performing local layer three functions, but then it needs to know about ACI because this end workstation needs to go to the fabric in order to hit those application servers. So this site needs to work in the production environment, which is hosted also in the ACI fabric, right? So the way we do that is we peer with BGP, right? We do a BGP peering, and then we announce in BGP what I should advertise to site one and vice versa, what site one can reach in the VXLAN fabric. The first item we have to do in order to make this work and basically, or more important for the rest of the fabric to know about site one is that we need to route reflect those routes from site one onto the fabric. So we have to designate the spine switches as route reflectors. Okay. So they're going to be route reflectors. So basically what they're going to do, the border leaf is going to announce that in ACI and the way it does, it does VXLAN on top with eBGP. So you designate an AS number in BGP. And then what it's going to do is just going to re-advertise everything or he's just going to push the routes to the other leaves. So everyone knows how to get to this particular sub. 
obviously this happens once we configure the correct contract. Because again, in ACI, everything needs a contract. So I am also going to designate the local core and IP 172.16.10.1. So we got dot two for leaf one, dot three for leaf two, and finally dot one for site one's local core. Once we configure everything, we should be able to have reachability between this network and those peer addresses. So once we do that, we should be able to ping back and forward, and we can test with a local machine that we have connected in this site one core. All right, so let me go ahead and show you a little bit more clearly of what we're talking about. We're going to begin the change by number one, let's build that interface profile. Remember, everything needs to be enabled, so we need to enable those interfaces. So we're going to build the interface profile. We're going to do the AEP, attachable access entity profile. We are going to build the external router domain, and then we are going to associate the external router domain to the attachable access entity profile, which then gets attached to the interface policy group. Okay, and this has been discussed in a previous section. So if you're still unsure of how this is done, I'm going to go through it through the video, but I'm going to go in a fast pace because this is primarily to discuss the L3 out BGP peering portion. So item one, we configure this interface profile, build that BPC policy group, and then configure the port channel in the local core, and then assign a VLAN 199SVI of 172.16.10.1 and assign the same in the BGP processing ACI for those two leaves. In this case, every node that we add in the external L3 out, you're going to see it, a node. Once you add a node, basically you add a leaf and then you designate the router ID. Because again, I want to peer BGP in leaf one to site one, but also I want to peer BGP in leaf two, site one. So I want to have BGP running here and BGP running here. One is going to be preferred over the other, but then if I lose one, then I still have a path to the fabric. So we have redundancy, okay? And basically, I have a local VLAN in site one, which is the VLAN that ACI needs to get to, as well as site one needs to get to ACI. So from VLAN 200, we should be able to reach resources in ACI. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and configure that external L3 out. Let's configure the interface profile. And then once we're ready to do the peering, I am going to do a quick pause. We'll go back to the slide. So you make sure that you're clear about what's the next step. Okay. Okay. So I am here in my ACI fabric and let's go on to the APIC fabric tab. Access policies. Let's go ahead and configure that VPC for site one. So I'm going to go real quick. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a VPC interface policy group, site one policy group. And let's enable CDP. And let's make sure that we are communicating at one gig. Those interfaces are set for one gig. And we'll press submit. The next item will be to configure the profile. The profile is going to be site one, interface profile. Okay. Interface selectors, site one, interface Ethernet, one two because it's one two on both right and select the port port one two attached to the policy group that we just configured press ok submit cool now let's go to the switch and attach that to the vpc and let's go real quick here add and find our site one there you go submit done okay so we got that now Let's build the AEP and let's go ahead and set it up for site one. So let's label this site one AEP and then I can build the layer three out or the external domain right here as soon as I do the AEP. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that domain profile, create layer three domain, main site one L3 out and this will be my layer three out. Okay, so let's select the VLAN pool. And because we only need one VLAN, which is 199, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Site one VLAN 199. And then let's select static. Select 199, 2, 199. We got it there. Submit. And we got the layer three out. There you go. So we have it ready to go. And we'll press next and finish. Okay. So now we have 
Site 1 AEP attached to a layer 3 out for Site 1 with the VLAN that we want to use to do the peering. Let's go on to policy groups, Site 1 policy group, and finally let's go ahead and attach that to the Site 1 AEP that we just configured. We'll press submit and done. Okay, now that we have that ready to go, let's go on to the fabric itself into the tenants. We're going to build a new tenant and let's call this external sites. So every single external site will be referenced into the tenant so that we can apply contracts between tenants. So we can isolate the sites from the fabric. We don't need to assign the external L3 out straight onto the web server farm. We can just designate a separate tenant and then from there be more granular of what the tenant can talk to what. Okay. And then VRF, let's call this site one. Okay, let's press submit. Cool. We got tenant external site configured. Now let's do the external L3 out. We are going to expand under the tenant. So we expanded tenant external site. We expanded networking. And you're going to see it right here. External routed networks. We right click, create external routed outside. And let's call this site one L3 out. This will be my L3 out. Okay. VRF. Let's attach to site one VRF and let's enable BGP. This is where we enable BGP to be used in this L3 out. Okay. Now, very important external router domain. You remember that we did that when we configured the AEP? This is where we select that site one L3 out. We already did that on the AEP. And then we'll press next. And then we're going to configure the external APGs after. So I just want to build the routed outside domain and then we're going to go deep into it. Okay. Okay. So now that we have the domain configured, we want to enable those interfaces. So what we're going to do, we're going to configure Ethernet 1.2. What we're going to do, we're going to configure the BGP process and we're going to add the router IDs to it for both leaves. So we need to add both leaves into the node profile and the external L3L that we configured. We assign the layer three address for both as well as the router ID. And this will be in the interface profile for the external L3 app. Once we do that, we then configure the network and we should configure site one and let's test how that goes. Remember BGP AS 65500, VNAN199. And finally, we configure the site one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that in order. Leaf 101, then leaf 102. And finally, we configure site one. Okay, so now that we have the site L3 out, you know what? First of all, we got to make sure that we have the route reflector in place. So remember, you have to configure the route reflector. And in order for us to advertise what I am going to know about site one on the rest of the ACI fabric, I got to configure the route reflector policy. So if we go to fabric, fabric policies, we go pod policies and policy groups, we click our pod policy group. And then we're going to see that BGP route reflector policy uh, right there. We're in my case, I'm just going to modify the default one. There's already a default one. And then if you can see, I already configure it. I have a designated AS number that is going to be used in BGP to announce this to the rest of the leaves. Remember this autonomous number cannot conflict with any other AS number that we want to peer to. It has to be unique. Okay. So I just designated 65503 and then assign my route reflector node to be spine 201 because that's the, the spine that I have in my ACI fabric. Okay. So we're going to click close and let's go back onto tenants and let me expand networking, route it network site one. Okay. So let's go ahead and configure the node profile and let's call it leaf 101, 102 going to site one so the first router id will be 10 10 10 10 and we want to leave the router id as the loopback address so then we can ping it because it basically builds a loopback address that we can reach to test and then let's do the same thing for no 102 router id 10 20 20 20 the same press ok now that we did the logical node profile we have to do the bgp peer connectivity profile which in this case is going to select the VPC that we previously configured for leaf 101 and 102. And I mean the layer three addresses for leaf 101 and 102. 
So I should be able to see the interface right here. There you go. So I got the policy group that we configure and the layer three out. A leaf 101 is dot two, leaf 102 is dot three. So select them and now we configure the address for my peering side. For site one, it's going to be 172.16.10.1. Multi hop, if we want to hop between sites by using the ACI fabric as transit, we type the multi hop and I'm going to put four. Imagine if I have four hops in order for me to get to another BGP network or BGP adjacency. Okay, so I have to hop multiple times in order to get to an external BGP AS number, then you type it there. Okay. And let me go ahead. And then you have options here. If you need options in your BGP AS, you can do it. In this case, I am not going to select any of those. It's 65501. Local AS number, no options. I am not going to add any options to my local number. And my local AS number is going to be 6500. And that's it. We'll press submit and we have the peer connectivity of 172.16.10.1 to my site one policy group, which is 10.2 and 10.3. Okay, cool. So now you can see that I have both node 101 and 102 part of this site one L3 out. So leaf 101 and 102, they have the site one VPC interface participating. And those are the two links going to site one. Now we need to configure a network object. And this is an external network object that will allow us to tell ACI, hey, this is what I know about an external network. I need to announce to ACI, hey, you are going to allow connectivity to this particular network. So in this case, we know that site one network that we want to reach from ACI and back and forth, they want to reach ACI from, is going to be the 10.201 zero slash 24 and you can check here on the diagram and on the diagram like i mentioned to you it's a local vlan 200 and the site one core and the network is 10 200 one zero slash 24 so let me go back so first of all we're going to label this external network to be site one and this is where we add those subnets from that external network to allow connectivity into aci or to allow the fabric to learn from them you can either do a zero zero zero, which means that I'm just allowing everything that is being advertised. Or if you want to be more control and also allow more security from a fat fingering, like someone decides to fat finger a route or something, then you protect yourself from that incident. So in this case, I am going to announce 10 one zero, which is part of site one onto the fabric. And I basically allow this external subnets for the external EPG, because this is basically an EPG, but it's an external EPG. And then we basically tell that this is what is available in this external APG, which is 10 24 for site one. Okay. We got a couple of options. We can export any route that I know in ACI to site one. So if I have connectivity from another network inside ACI, I can then advertise this, export it, and then site one will learn from it. Or I can then import, but I have to enable that in the L3 out, and I can import any other route from the external site into ACI. And we're definitely gonna work on this on our next video, okay? So we'll press okay, and we'll click submit. And now you can see already, control plane kicked in, and we have node 101 with having an R table. Node 102 also has an R table, but we still need to configure site one core, so then it appears in BGP. So we have to build the configurations in BGP over there. Probably I'm not gonna have any activity, right? Because I have no configurations performed in the site one side. So we have to do that right now. And yes, I do have a my router ID for leaf 101, and then I should have the same for leaf 102. So you see here, leaf 102, but then again, my neighborship is idle because I don't have BGP configured in site one. So let's go ahead and do it real quick. Okay. And for ease of our video, I already staged this grid of what we need to add into the site one core. So let me go ahead and do it real quick. I am going to add the Vina 199. I am going to create the port channel that faces the VPC to leaf 101 and 102. And finally, I am going to add my BGP config, which is 65501. And then my two neighbors, uh, leaf 101, leaf 102, and what I'm announcing, which is my local 10 24. Okay, so let me go ahead first and add the VLAN 199. So I need to enable it here. So that's done. Now let me configure that port channel. Let me add the complete configuration 
Serial 25 goes to leaf 101. Serial 27 goes to leaf 102. And finally, port channel allowing 199, which is our peering view. And I got to do the encapsulation. Okay, and then I should be good to go. Cool. So now I have it there. So show ether channel summary is still in awaiting to be aggregated. So let's give it a few. And already we got one. We are waiting for this. And both of them are part of the LACP group. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So we are both in LACP active. And okay, so now let's do the layer three configurations. Okay, let me go ahead and find my uh, notepad. This will be my site one network, which is 10 201 0 slash 24. And this is the default gateway for that network in site one. And this is my peer address. You remember in ACI where we configure 10.1 to be my connectivity peer? So this is the local interface. Okay, so let me go ahead and add all this. And then finally add the BGP configurations, which basically what it tells me is my local AS number is 65501 in the process. My router ID is the same as my B199. You know, and neighbors are two and three with their respective remote AS numbers of 65500 for both. Okay, so let me go ahead and copy all this and copy and paste. Okay, cool. So let me make sure that I am connected, which by the way, I am completely peered. So that's good. So if you show CDP neighbor and get 025, you can see here, leave 101. Okay, perfect. And then 27 should be 102. There you go. Awesome. Now, let me go back to the fabric. Okay, so we are here in the fabric. And let me refresh to see if this changes to established. Yeah, look at that. Established. And let me see. Perfect. This looks amazing. Okay, so let me click on 101. And let me make sure that we're seeing the same thing. Perfect. Established. External sites. Up. Neighbor. Established. It looks perfect. Okay. Now, let me take a look at the site one and see if the BGP is also active, which should be because we're seeing established in the ACI fabric. So we should see the same thing in the site one core. Okay, so let me take a look real quick here. Show BGP IPv4 unicast summary. And there you have it. I have both neighbors currently awaiting prefixes from my ACI fabric, but this tells me that they're completely active. So it's all good. Okay. Now, let me take a look in ACI, and I'm going to log in into the APEC, and I'm going to see if I see the network of 10.200.1.0.24, and I can reach it. And let me open a new window real quick, and this will go to the APEC. That's my management. Let me log in as an admin. There we go. Now we're going to attach to one of the leaves, because we want to see the table from one of the leaves. Okay? 101. Next, password, and we are on leaf 101 right now. Show IP route VRF. Now, first thing, tenant name, external, sites, colon, site one is my VRF name inside the tenant. Tenant, it's called external sites, and this is the VRF name. We'll press enter, and voila, there you go. So I want to show you what this is all about. Right now, this is a VRF site one in a VRF external sites, which is basically the tenant name, tenant name, VRF name. In this route table for site one, I have learned from 10 to 2020. And if you remember, this is the loopback or the router ID for leaf 102, and we're logged in in leaf 101. So what happened was the BGP route reflector, remember when we configured the route reflector in the beginning? That has the AS number of 65503. So ACI, what it did was it reflected what it knew locally from leaf 102 into leaf 101. And I should see that also on leaf 103 and 104. 10, 20, 20, 20 is the local router ID for leaf 102 in this BGP process. And finally, what we are waiting for. This is the site one local network already learned in ACI, and this has been learned via 172.16.10.1, which is the core in site one, via a BGP redistribution with the tag of 65500, which is the local AS number in site one core. Okay?
So if everything goes accordingly, I should be able to paint that one, which is the local interface in site one core. Let's take a look at my moment of truth. There you go. Okay, so you got it. We have full connectivity from ACI to site one. All right, so now what we want to do, we can create a contract and we can allow communication between site one and the ACI fabric without too much hassle. Okay, so there's a lot of steps. But as long as you follow the right order of operations, meaning that you build the objects, you attach everything, and then you finally configure everything in sequential order, you're not going to have any problems. But this is golden right here. We're having end-to-end -end reachability from site one to the ACI fabric.